It's 4.45 in the morning and Tyler and I are gonna go wing a sunrise here in Hakodate, Japan. I've been dying to do a little bit of landscape photography. I like the urban photography, I like the street photography, I like all that stuff, but I love being out in nature shooting some landscapes. So uh, when I looked at the map and I saw that there was potential seascapes here in Hakodate, yesterday I was like, I have to go out and try to shoot. It looks like there's some rocks that I can use as foreground. It looks really cool here. Um, we got maybe like 15 minutes until sunrise, so we just gotta find a spot now. I think we're gonna head out to this cape, this point out this way. It looks like, yeah, it looks like the perfect spot to shoot. So sorry about the wind, I'm gonna try to shield it. Tyler and I were on the other side of the Cape this morning talking about how it's just not windy and how calm it was, it's amazing. And then as soon as we got around to the Cape, it just started howling through. We're out here on some point, the views are incredible that way, um, but the light's not. We haven't gotten good light, I don't think, in the entire time in Japan so far. I would love to get some light one of these days, but a scene like this you can really make work even if you don't have light. I've just got the 16 to 35 on, a six stop ND, and a three stop grad ND to kind of hold it all together. And I'm just using this beach or this rock beach to kind of lead through this image. There's also a lot of rocks in the water creating nice anchors. So overall it's a good image. It's a good kind of fine art landscape photography image. I think to turn this into a travel image though, we need to get somebody at the end of this point. So that's level two, and that's what we're gonna shoot now. Things I thought I would never say at the start of this trip were that I need to come back to Hakodate, Japan. This place is really cool, lots of really awesome foregrounds and seascapes that way. Uh, now that it's brighter outside, I can see that there's not a real trail, but kind of a trail down that way. I think there's even a rope that somebody's put in there to get down, and there's some really badass seascapes down that way uh, to shoot. Lots of leading lines, lots of rocks, and yeah, fantastic. Anyways, we got our travel image. And I'm stoked with it. I think it came out really, really good. We're just back here and we used the leading lines of the coast. I stood on that point there and Tyler stood on that point and we took the shot and I went like ISO 400. And the reason I went ISO 400 is because I wanted a long shutter speed. So I put on the six stop. I don't have a three stop or a two stop. So I had to put the six stop on and then counterbalance the shutter speed by bumping up the ISO. So the ISO is, let me check. The ISO is, ISO 200, F8, and it's a 10 second exposure. We were also shooting F8, ISO 400, and five second exposures just to try to get sharper people, but I did like the look of the water better at 10 seconds. So really, really stoked with how this morning went. And now we've got a long, long train ride down to Osaka.
That was awesome, awesome, awesome this morning. Um, I want to talk quickly about what we're doing with Trover here. We're not only using Trover to find locations here, but we're actually using Trover to make it easier for you guys to find cool locations. So on this trip to Japan, Tyler and I are putting together a list on Trover that'll also be on my website of the best places to shoot in Japan, best places to take pictures in Japan. And I think that's where the real advantage of Trover is. It's in crowdsourcing. It's turning it into a community. As you guys know, these apps, these uh, websites that help you location scout and find cool places to shoot really only work if the community is awesome. So check out the list that Tyler and I have put together on uh, the best locations to shoot here in Japan and maybe it encourages you guys to make your own as well for your hometown or for your um, country or a place you went to recently. Make it easier for other photographers to find epic places like this because this wasn't on Trover this morning when we checked. It will be on Trover tonight. We're packing up and leaving our hotel here in Hakodate, and I want to show something that's pretty cool. The hotels are, they're kind of expensive in Japan. Um, outside of Tokyo, they're not that bad though. I think we paid $45, $50 a night for this hotel, so that's not that bad. But one of the coolest things is the hotels have Wi-Fi. But not only do a lot of them have Wi-Fi, a lot of them have this thing called Handy. And this Handy is literally a phone that you can take with you that has Wi-Fi on it. So if you don't have like an international SIM card or whatever, you can take their phone and use it for maps or you can tether it to your own phone or whatever. I think that's so cool. And um, I'm not going to take it with me to the train though because I'll probably have to pay for that. So let's go to the train and use our own phone. <laughs> We got a lot of train ahead of us today. We're trying to make the most of our rail pass by covering as much ground on travel days as possible. So today's train, we're going from Hakodate Station to Shin Hakodate Hokuto Station, which is like a 22 minute journey. And then from there, we take the Hakodate train, the Hayu Hayabusa train, which is the bullet train down to Tokyo, and that's a 255 minute train. We get there by three, we transfer trains 20 minutes, and then we take another train to Shin Osaka Station, that's a 173 minute train, I think that's another bullet train. And then from Shin Osaka, we catch another train to Osaka Station, and then finally we catch the metro to our hotel in Osaka. Train number one down, 33 minutes in. A lot of minutes to go. Japanese business person on that train and just slept for like two and a half hours and now we're in Tokyo got a 20 minute exchange and uh, on the train to Osaka next God, what a shock to the system being up in Hokkaido where things were calm and quiet and then coming straight into Tokyo at basically rush hour we hadn't seen like a tourist like a Western tourist in ages and now the car we're getting on has like a hundred of them it's it's insane the change that's happened and uh, I'm feeling a little bit culture shocked in a weird way so um, we're gonna jump on this train now and then it's like about two and a half hours to Shin Osaka
lunchtime on the train. Bento boxes all around. It was uh, the loudest train in the history of Japan. A bunch of Brazilian tourists got on board and they were not following Japanese et etiquette at all. But uh, we're here in Osaka now and we still have one more stop because we're at Shin Osaka. We have Osaka Station and then a metro before we finally get to our hotel. We're getting there, we're almost there. Made it to Osaka and um, we're at our, our hostel hotel and I'm kind of regretting staying way over in Osaka because it looks like it's a mission to get to Kyoto for sunrises or impossible. So um, we'll figure out a solution for that in the next couple days. Lots of exploring here in Kyoto. We're also going to Nara, uh, Himeji Castle and some other stuff around here. We're here in this area for a week. And I'm stoked for that and I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow. Short vlog today but I uh, spent most of the day on trains. And yeah, that's how it goes sometimes. See you tomorrow.